As a responsible person with growing concerns for your privacy and personal liberty, you want to know where we're headed and what you can do about it. We ask the experts what you need to do to take prudent and responsible action to safeguard your family's wealth and well-being and what basic first steps will help you to be aware and prepared. ReluctantPreppers.com Welcome back, Reluctant Preppers. We're glad to have a returning guest tonight, Ann Barnhart, founder of former Barnhart Capital Management and a widely outspoken critic on all things political, economic, and moral, is here with us again on Reluctant Preppers to give us her insight of what's going on in the world and the direction that we're headed. Ann, thank you for joining us again here on Reluctant Preppers. Oh, thank you for having me. Happy Easter to one and all. Thank you. And uh, we have a, a number of viewers' questions. We won't be able to get through all of them tonight, so I'll select some from viewers uh, who submitted questions specifically for you and uh, give you a chance to take a crack at them. Okay. Uh, the first one comes from uh, Michael Schmidt. It's, uh, these first ones I'll pick are more in the political realm. At Michael Schmidt asks, does Trump or the populist movement have a chance at reversing our decline? No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. First of all, it's too mathematically far gone. And I think, you know, we've we've talked about this before. Um, and the math, it just continues to be there. You can you can try to deny reality as much as you want, but you can't deny the consequences of reality. This wall is going to be hit. It is a mathematical wall. A lot of people ask the question, well, you know, you've been talking about these problems and other people like Carl Denninger, who focuses a lot on the um, what is the big catastrophe within the U.S. government, which Trump gives absolutely zero indication that he's going to do anything about, which is the this business of spending and the 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 exponential increase in health care costs and how this is just chewing up a progressively greater, greater and greater percentage of the money that is spent by the government of the former United States. These are mathematical realities. You can't you can't deny this. And because nothing like this has ever happened before in human history, it, it's especially difficult for anybody to say, well, wh when are we going to hit the hit the wall? How much longer can this go on? I don't know. Nobody knows. This has never happened before. Nothing, nothing even close to this has ever happened before. You can look at the objective reality of the mathematics and you can know, OK, this cannot continue. It is it is metaphysically impossible for this to just keep going and going and going ad infinitum. But do we know how long this this whole wretched uh, farce of a situation in terms of, you know, the spending and the debt and so forth? Do we know how long this could be drug out? No, we don't. We sure don't. And so you just you have to you acknowledge it for what it is. You see it for what it is. You prepare because you know, at, at some point, this is going to, we're going to have to deal with the consequences of all this. But you also can't be, be looking at it and saying, well, you know, if, if it, if the entire system doesn't collapse within one year, then massive amounts of spending and massive amounts of debt, this, this must not actually be a problem. And surprisingly, there's a lot of people out there who get onto this bandwagon. Right. A lot, a lot of normalcy bias. A lot of people who just say, "Well, if it isn't, if it hasn't happened yet, then maybe this isn't a problem." And there are there are actually people who hold themselves out as what, what would you call them academics? I mean, what a joke! Who actually try to make the academic argument that government debt is irrelevant, that it's completely irrelevant, that the the government can can rack up as much debt as it wants to without any end and there will never ever be any consequence to that first of all that's just stupid it defies it defies common sense i mean a three-year-old child can tell you that that de defies common sense um go you ahead. know you mentioned i just wanted to join in with you there on that on the common sense approach we've been talking with a number of our other other um uh guests and in fact uh, also uh, in another venue have been uh, examining work, for example, of um, some of the speakers who speak out about the loss of 
not just common sense, but the loss of rational thought and the ability to even think deeply about things and to have patience to actually reflect on things as almost a lost art in the next generation and the way that we're being both um, conditioned by our instant uh, customized electronic uh, you know, stimulus through, through mobile devices and everything, as well as just the culture, uh, cultural shift in that direction. So you mentioned people say, you've been talking about this for some time now and it hasn't happened yet. In other words, the attention span, this 15 second or whatever it is, attention span of the public is, if it doesn't, if I don't see the immediate follow up of something, it must not be real because I expect everything to happen like right now rather than being able to say, I'm going to look deeper than the surface uh, flash of the moment and, and really see what the fundamentals are that are actually underlying here. Indeed, absolutely. And, you know, it, it goes beyond that. It's even a, there. there's a term um, in, in, theology and so forth that's diabolical disorientation and i think that 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 is exactly what's going on in our culture it isn't even the fact that people can't think in any sort of logical logical progression we're beyond we're to the point now where this especially this younger generation um that generation is now so thoroughly imbued with narcissism and and a diabolical uh, a sense of the diabolical that now they're even they're denying objective realities such as as sex that there are male human beings and female human beings right. we're, we're now getting into this where you can't even you know a, a baby is born you look down at it it has a penis and a scrotum every cell in its body has an x chromosome and a y chromosome and these these people are so diabolically disoriented that they will look you in the eye and they have a they have a dogmatic even a a zealous unto willing to be used ultimately i am convinced violence that sort of a that sort of a mindset that they they truly believe that that the objective evidence right in front of them of the child being a male, being of the male sex, is does not exist, is not real. Sex and gender is a complete is a complete construct. That child has no sex. It has no gender. It's fluid. It should be able to choose whether it's a boy or a girl when it. I mean, th this is we're, we're into the into a domain the, of insanity abject insanity that has not that i don't believe has ever been seen in human history i think this makes sodom and gomorrah look positively high functioning this this business of this dis, of this diabolical disorientation up to and including the denial of objective physical realities that are right in front of you yeah how much longer can this go on it seems to me uh, you know <laughs> always having had the gift of being able to um, speculate about how things could be worse. I mean, and that doesn't make you necessarily a negative person. I think it's, I think it's a, a, a key of virility that a person be able to say, all right, I'm in, I'm in this situation now. How could this, how could this get worse? What should I anticipate? What should I be looking for? I'm sitting here looking at this business of, you know, the 1976, Olympic decathlon champion cutting off his own penis and telling the world that he's a woman and everybody nodding their head and saying, yes, I, I honestly don't know how, where you go from here. I mean, I guess they just, they haven't started slaughtering people like us in the streets yet. They haven't set up the guillotines and started demanding that we all, that we all uh, agree to all of this and behead us if, if we don't. But I suppose that's, it will, it will get there at some point. But at this point, in terms of this denial of objective reality, uh, I don't know what is more fundamental than, you know, for example, the sex of a human being. Right. Is, it, is it a man? Is it a woman? Is that a baby boy or is that a baby girl? I, I don't even know how you get more fundamental than that. Mathematics. Oh, that's that's in the rearview mirror denying the objective reality of mathematics. Would that it were that we were back in the happy days when that was the only problem is that people denied mathematics. We're now into things that. Like I said, I, I don't know how much further it can go, and I don't know how much longer this can drag out and this can last. But the prudence demands that you be that you be prepared, that you constantly be prepared. Without uh, being able to name the day or the time, this following question is in the same vein. 
from Halcyon, when individuals or companies go bankrupt, they are bankrupt. That means it's all over and everything is done, liquidated. Anyway, that's the only. this is the only time in history when what is bankrupt is not bankrupt. Most everything related to the government and banking system is bankrupt. Yet, is it? it is not? So how can what is bankrupt, broken, dead, still be alive, walking around? Why or when does this bankrupt zombie finally fall over, this corpse of a system finally take its last breath? So I know you've already answered the we don't know when question, but can you address that other one, which I think is a reasonable tack on the other question, which is if our not only our government, but all sovereign governments are basically uh, in debt beyond, you know, to the point of insolvency, and uh, as are the, you know, the, the social security system and private pensions and on and on states and, and major uh, regions in China and cities in the U.S. and that sort of thing. How is it that bankrupt doesn't mean bankrupt anymore? Sure, exactly. And this goes back to this whole diabolical disorientation mindset. And what this is about, um, one thing that it's about is denial of the principle or the law of non-contradiction. Something cannot both be and not be at the same time. And it kind of, it, this kind of shines a light on this. Either you, you, are bankrupt or you are not. You can't be both solvent and insolvent at the mm -hmm. same time. But again, our culture, human race, whatever you want to call it, is so far gone that now in order in order to just exist in the world, every one of us, if we're going to have a bank account, any sort of a piece of plastic, you know, car even ca carrying around Federal Reserve notes backed by the full faith and credit of the United States government, you know, um, either, either it is or it isn't. And yet we're living in this in this world in which every one of us, to a certain degree, has to violate the principle of non-contradiction in our own minds in order to just keep going and keep paying bills and continuing to move forward as if this government that that we're under is is somehow licit legitimate functioning etc cetera, etc cetera. the other problem um and i know we've talked about this before is just a complete lack of understanding and what you were talking about, a lack of thoughtfulness, I think, about what exactly is money. And this whole argument that you can just keep racking up these these incomprehensible levels of debt, and it's just not a problem. This is the lack of thoughtfulness about what exactly is the nature of money. And as I've been screaming and yelling now for years and years and years, um, Money is a proxy for human life. It's a fungible proxy for the human capacity to labor, produce, and create through time. And so when you do rack up all of this debt, what you are doing is you are leveraging human life, not only the, the lives of the people that are alive and presumably within the workforce and working age within your, your nation, but now the levels of debt are so enormous that we've leveraged the lives of people who haven't even been born yet and haven't even been born yet for centuries forward. That's how much we've leveraged this deal. And of course, those are those are the ultimate victims because people who haven't even been born yet are utterly, totally and completely helpless to to protest this. And so in a sense, the the moral responsibility, the onus falls on the people that are alive today, that are adults today, that are, you know, of voting age people who are in fact consenting to the government or not consenting to the government, it, it is the onus is on us to stand up and, and not just defend ourselves and not just defend the people who are horizontal to us in time, but also go into that Z dimension into, into the future and say, not only do we have to defend ourselves and each other, we have to defend all of these people who haven't been born yet and won't be born yet for centuries. What about them? How how can we live with ourselves leveraging their life, putting them into debt slavery, leaving them in, in basically a, a legacy of a completely collapsed, failed government, which will inevitably descend into into jackboot thuggery and basically Venezuela? You're just saying I'm I'm completely content that 
uh, people who haven't been born for another 200 years, I'm content to let them live in basically a, a Venezuela type economy and and national situation as long as I can have my 4,000 square foot house with granite countertops and my two brand new cars sitting in the garage. I, I'm cool to, to consign future generations to Venezuela status as long as I get mine now. And what is that again? That's just narcissism and also an incapacity to to think things through. And the, the narcissism, what that basically is, is a being deficient in love. And, you know, say, oh, that's sappy. And we don't want to think oh, this is a this is a show about economics and we don't want to talk about all that garbage. Well, I'm sorry, but the pathology so much of this, the pathology behind it is that people don't have a capacity to love. And I mean that in the in the large sense of charity, um, just not being a complete narcissist and actually caring about caring about other people on not necessarily on an intimate, squishy, personal level, but just w goodwill towards your fellow man and having having that capacity to love in a normal emotionally healthy way your uh, your fellow human beings a lot of people don't want to talk about that oh that all this has to have some sort of a solution that has nothing to do with any of these topics which then inevitably intersect um with with religious questions and so forth i'm sorry though if you if you want to be a thoughtful grown-up you just keep ramming up against these these concepts and these ideas and there is not a there's not a non-religious non-secular completely non emotional non-effective a f f e c t i v e non-effective um answer or solution to any of this so back to your very very first question can we get out of this can the trump movement get out of this well first of all no um, it's it's too far gone. There has to be a hard reset, mathematically speaking. But also, I see I see no indication that any of these people care any anything about this. They're all in it for their own personal well being. Um, the bloom, I think, is definitely off of the Trump rose with so many of the people who were suckered into that. And and I think they're people of goodwill. Um, first and foremost, who said it is of the utmost importance that. Billary Clinton not get their meat hooks back into the White House again. Right. And uh, one one hundred percent with you there. Praise God that Hillary Clinton will never be president of the former United States, and that that whole hustle it looks like is kind of is we hope is winding down. They're trying they're trying to talk Chelsea up, but Chelsea, mama me, you think <laughs> you think you think Hillary was lacking in charm? I mean. First of all, Chelsea, by all accounts, is an even bigger psychopath than her parents, which kind of stands to reason, because if you were brought up under that, I mean, you'd be you'd be a basket case, too. But she also is just completely, utterly devoid of any sort of charm or anything like that. It's going to be really, really tough to sell her on the American people. I, I guess they're going to try to do it. But, you know, whatever. In terms of the Trump thing, um, it, it, again, I, I've, I'm getting emails now from people saying, you know, you're right, as he's now capitulating to the new world order and just basically doing what he's told. It's clear. It was clear to me from the beginning. I'm shocked that he got in. First of all, I was wrong about that. I just thought there was no possible way. I thought it was I thought it was professional wrestling top to bottom and that there's no way that they would let him quote unquote win that election well okay i was wrong he's in there now he's folding like a cheap suit on so much of this um and i tried to explain to people and show people and, and show citations from hit quotes from his myriad television appearances from his books so on and so forth and show you this guy is a leftist he's in he's aggressively in favor of universal health care, which means to single payer, total government control health care. OK, he's not going to be any help on 
on in terms of fixing this health care situation and these inflating costs. In fact, he wants the thing to collapse. He wants to instill uni- universal single payer. He's been talking up how great the Canadian health care delivery system and all this is for years and years. Why, why do you not look at the objective evidence of this and be in- informed by it? Um, so... I, I, and I'm getting these emails and people are saying things like, well, yes, you were right, but your your tone in all of this is so is so condescending. Why can't why are you trying to shame us? I'm saying because you should be ashamed. You should be ashamed when you fall for a huckster, a carnival barker. As obvious as Trump. I started drawing the analogy between the Trump presidential campaign and professional wrestling. And I I promise you, I did not know that just a few years ago, he was literally a player in the professional wrestling entertainment business with Vince McMahon and the WWE. And I I had no idea of this. And I I pulled up something on YouTube and there's Donald Trump body slamming Vince McMahon at WrestleMania 426 or whatever it is just a few years ago. And I'm not kidding you. My jaw just dropped on the floor. I said, "You're, you're kidding me. He actually is and was involved in professional wrestling. Okay. There's a certain point where if you fall for something that is as transparently obvious of of a fraud as that, you should be ashamed of yourself. This notion that no one should ever feel bad for any of the bad choices or bad decisions that they make and how dare you make me feel bad. You know what? That's the reason why this country is in such deep crap. Because nobody is ashamed of anything anymore. No one's ashamed of any adverse, you know, consequences to any of their decisions. Everything is about I have to be ratified in everything. We've brought this on ourselves. The fault is ours. We should be ashamed as a nation. This this it's all coming at you. It's been coming for decades and decades and decades. The culture has been in a steep downward spiral since at least the mid 1960s and it was obvious that it was and a lot of the people just sat there and watched it yeah and a lot of the people on our channel um are here because they perceive in the same way that you're that you're describing uh that the loss of accountability the loss of uh self-reliance self-determination that sort of thing the, the the transition to a nanny state a lot of these cultural values uh have been lost and they want to take um constructive, positive, prudent action and responsible to, to protect their family. One example of that, uh, what you it, it, what you just described, is the uh, fantasy of creation of unlimited wealth through the fiat uh, banking system rather than sound money. You've talked about in the past the, the uh, scandal that ended for what you voluntarily exited your capital management uh, business because of the uh, unwinding of the of the corruption and, and the lack of, of true accountability and enforcement in the in the uh, financial arena and this next question from Lawrence Jackson is in that vein uh, if you could take us into that moment where money is created out of thin air uh, they say when broker dealer banks make loans do they just credit a deposit account to offset the loan? If so, how does the third party get paid their cash if they're not issuing a check? <laughs> I I kind of perused the um, the little YouTube video that you put up that just briefly solicited um, that br- briefly solicited questions, right. and I saw that, and I thought, well, that, is this the last person left on the face of the earth that thinks that you know financial transactions today are done by writing a check? And yeah. uh, I mean, it, it seemed it seemed to me the question seems just extraordinarily naive. You know, all all of this stuff is is done the federal reserve what do they do when they want to expand the balance sheet they open they open up a, you know i don't know if it's an excel spreadsheet or what it is and somebody sits there and types one zero 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 enter that's a trillion dollars mm-hmm. that's it 
that, that that's how bad it is okay and so yes it just shows up it just shows up on the balance sheet that's why when you look at the balance sheets of these banks it's when we say it's a house of cards and it's all air a i r it's all air we're saying that because there is nothing on the other side of this there's no um there's no bank owners equity against anything there's no you know in terms of mortgages and so forth the valuations on the mortgages assume the best possible situation and if there's ever any sort of a downtick that's why this this real estate thing is so precarious right. is because whenever all of these banks are valuing all of these loans that they have if they're even still carrying them most of them get dumped on the government um, but when they value the property that is against the loan it's using the rosiest possible number and when there is any sort of a bubble bubble bursting in any sort of a local area and it doesn't necessarily have to happen throughout the entire country all at once right. so for example um what's super hot like vancouver which is in british columbia but you know still we can kind of look at that as very similar to the united states real estate market that's one of the most hyper inflated real estate markets on the planet right now it's possible that the vancouver of a real estate market that 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 bubble could burst the whole thing could devalue by 50 percent but the rest of the united states wouldn't devalue by 50 percent you right. just get into these localized bubbles with the and these banks have these loans and if every day they're marking to market the value of the loan as what the value of the house was at the very top of the market when the house sold for way, way, way too much, and the, and the loan was issued, and then the bubble bursts and everything pulls back, and they never mark any of this to market. That's what we mean by that. That this is, this stuff is just. It's a house of cards. It's not. It's non-extant. There's nothing real against most of it. Look at uh, consumer debt. Um, just credit cards. What is that? It's just expanding somebody's balance sheet by saying, we're going to permit you to leverage your future life. We are going to commit this act of usury against your life in the future. That's what we're leveraging. We're not leveraging in a parcel of land, a car, any sort of actual asset. We're not going to post any bank owner's capital against any of this to guarantee any of it. We're just going to concoct out of thin air this quote unquote wealth and what in reality it is, it's we are leveraging your life. Right. We're leveraging the next 30 years of your life. And in fact, we're letting you participate in this yourself so you can participate in your own in your own suicide. Uh, you know, and that isn't that the way it always is. It isn't just at the end at the end when things get really bad. It isn't just that people are committing crimes against other people. When you get to the end of something like this, what happens is that the enemy and, you know, I'm I'm a Catholic and so I believe in Satan and demons and all that. What they actually want us to do is they want us to participate in our own destruction ourselves. So and it, and it when, ties into what we were saying earlier, too, about the loss of, of common sense. If, as you describe, people really reflect on the fact that the, both the Federal Reserve and the uh, and the. Uh, reserve banking system have the ability to create arbitrarily large amounts of mm -hmm. money out of nothing and then charge interest mm -hmm. on it. It's yeah. like, Hey, that, that business sounds too good to be true. Well, it is. And, and, but you're participating in it on the victim side and, and you're signing yeah, and up, you, as you mentioned, for the obligation. And you, you trail along after politicians who are basically saying to you, I am going to enable the continuation of this so that we can maintain your normalcy bias and you and we can continue to maintain this facade. That is, that is what sells right now in terms of these politicians. If someone ran and told people the truth about what needed to happen and about the austerity that would that we are all going to have to undergo 
when if we were to if we were to voluntarily choose to make any concrete steps to, towards reforming all of this right. oh the, i mean even even the the farthest right of the far right in the contemporary post american culture would either laugh you off the stage or or boo and hiss and throw rotten tomatoes at you until they drove you off the stage nobody nobody wants to hear about any of this and you hear kooky things like well all they need to do is mint um trillion dollar coins and then hold them in a bank or hold them in a in a at fort knox or something and you know just just mint 20 25 30 coins and and call them one trillion dollars just make that up make that up and if you do that then you would have something on the other side of the balance sheet well again a precocious three-year-old child could tell you that that's not a trillion dollars that's not what that is you 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 mint a coin call it a trillion dollars how many man hours is a trillion dollars i can't even do it off the top of my Mm -hmm. head but you know if you work the math out on that Man years. Um, I use 2000 years as the uh, excuse me, 2000 hours as the convention for one man year. Right. And what's the average wage? Call the average wage. I don't know, thirty dollars an hour right. by now or something like that across the population. Do the math out. What's a trillion dollars? How many man years is that? A precocious three year old child could tell you, no, that that coin that whoever says lo and behold that's a trillion dollars no no i'm sorry but it isn't it really really isn't and if we would just think about these things they're they're actually quite simple usually objective reality is exactly that it's simple it's knowable it's right there in front of you these these questions aren't difficult it's our own disorientation and our own desire to keep this thing going that allows us to convince ourselves of these just absolutely kooky wacky nonsensical potential solutions in quotes to these problems yeah it made me think that your terminology that you use a couple of times normalcy bias we should call it abnormalcy bias <laughs> abnormalcy bias exactly yeah and that yeah. turns us to the next topic of pre- preparedness and preservation for people who want to extract themselves from this alternate reality that's not going to serve them well in the future um Amradko says Anne, i find what you say very interesting wish to see more often my question I see so many, quote, experts on this channel and on YouTube who warn us of pending economic collapse, yet they are still involved in the stock market and investments of various kinds. Why Mm -hmm. aren't these people totally out of the market? Oh, isn't that a good question? Um, right around the time that I closed my brokerage and and you know was pretty famous on the financial channels, I did an interview with oh, what's his name? His father's the tax protester who just recently died. Schiff, Schiff, Peter Schiff. Yeah. So I do I do this interview with with Peter Schiff, and um, <laughs> and. He said, well, what do, what do you think we should do? And I said, well, I think uh, a financial market strike. I think we should all just completely pull out of this system and stop participating in it. And I said that in the context of MF Global and John Corzine and the clear criminality and how clearly complicit the government, the regulatory bodies, the exchanges, the exchange itself, the Chicago Mercantile Exchange in that right. specific case, they were they were utterly complicit in all of that. It wasn't just the fact that one psychopath, John Corzine, committed a crime. Okay, that isn't cause to absolutely declare an entire paradigm no longer tenable. The issue with with what happened with Corzine and MF Global was that it was a, it, the corruption was completely saturated throughout the entire system. Every inch of it was completely corrupt and it was exposed. Okay, you if you're a person of integrity, you can't you can't carry on in that. And I'm doing this interview with Peter Schiff and he says, "Well, well, if if I if I completely withdrew the, from the financial markets, that would be the end of my business." And I and I said, "Um, yes, that's exactly the point. And that's why none of this is going to change because people aren't willing to to stop, to lay down what they have and say, 
I cannot go any further. Well, I have to keep my job. And I, I mean, I see this around me in every possible context. People saying, no, I can't do the right thing. No, I can't take a principled stand because I would lose my job. I would lose all of my friends, uh, you know, and all of these negative quote unquote negative consequences that would come out of doing something that manifested just a, a, even the smallest piece of personal integrity and no one will do it. I'm telling you folks, there is absolutely no way out of any of these problems until people start acting with integrity, which means almost always in this life, when you have to act with integrity, it means that you're voluntarily going to take on some sort of suffering or adverse consequence. You're going to lose your job. You're going to lose um, career track. You're going yeah. to lose potentially friends. You might even have people unfriend you on Facebook, gasp and swoon. In this world, especially in the, this world today, in this fallen world, in these dark days, manifesting personal integrity is going to mean that you're probably going to suffer in some way for doing it. And unless and until we man up and manifest virility and potency and start voluntarily acting with integrity and voluntarily taking on that suffering, there's not going to be any solution to any of this. And I mean the economy, I mean the government, I mean the church, universally across the board. It is a, the, the problem completely overarches. Yes. The uh, next one is about uh, practical steps that people can take and um, how they can get um, by in a, in a post-collapse era. Uh, Change Nicely writes, does Anne think the U.S. will be a safe place, both physically and monetarily, to stay in the next couple of years? That's one question. Second is, if so, has she talked about in the past how the best asset is one that you can eat? But what, peop what about people in suburban areas? What are some things that we can do beyond just having a garden to supply food that we might be able to stock up on? And if not, if, not, if it's not going to be a safe place, what would she recommend us using as fair trade with some when producing food in times of economic crisis beyond gold, silver, and Bitcoin, of course. Um, well, don't ever forget my my favorite precious metal, lead. You know, I heard I, I've seen some disturbing headlines that um, firearm and ammunition sales have dropped way off since November, whatever day it was that Trump was uh, was elected. And I'm, I look at that and I think, oh, come on, guys, you got to be smarter than that. With Biden out of the way, our liberties are no longer at risk, huh? Yeah, yeah, we're no longer at risk. The situation is now resolved. Everything's fine. No, 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 no. If, if nothing else, you have those things as, um, as instruments of barter. Absolutely. The other thing that I'm really big on is water purification, because when, when the poo hits the fan and people really start dying, it's going to be because that there is not water purification. Mm -hmm. And there's just nobody has any idea. Modern Americans have no idea how to deal with any of that. Um, and so I think spending, spending a little bit of money, if you're willing to you know, leverage, your, <laughs> leverage yourself to death to have a 4,000 square foot house and granite ca countertops and brand new cars, I think it would be very wise to drop 300, 600, 900 bucks and buying um, multiple mm -hmm. water, water purification systems, yeah. the, the, the portable ones, yeah, as right. in the, uh, the silver impregnated ceramic where you stick an in hose in any water source and pump it through the silver impregnated ceramic filter and potable water comes out the other side. You don't even have to boil it. You don't mm -hmm. have to use energy. Mm -hmm. Those things are expensive. Um, the ones I buy are three, three. 50, I think, mm -hmm. but they, their capacity is massive. You don't have to do anything, especially to the, uh, the silver impregnated ceramic ones. There's, there's no, basically no maintenance on the thing. So, 
something like that, I think water is going to be is going to be just absolutely key. Uh, guns and ammo. What else? I mean, you, you, your listeners, they know all about food and mm-hmm. all of that. Um, and also an, an interesting point is talking about, especially in terms of, of as we were talking about before we started the call, your personal situation. What if you have some sort of a medical condition which requires um ongoing pharmaceutical treatment and the the big example that's always given is um diabetics right. what in the world is going to happen if if the co- if you know it goes venezuela if it goes venezuela and all of the diabetics in the united states are no longer able to get insulin well most of those people are going to die and they're going to die fairly quickly um so just things like that, I, w- I would start making inquiries if you haven't already, if you or someone in your family who you know you're going to be responsible for, if they have pharmaceutical needs, you need to start talking to people and and figuring out a way that you can have at least some sort of a stockpile of that stuff at, that will at least give you some sort of a time cushion so that maybe you could flee somewhere where um, pharmaceuticals were still being produced and, right. and delivered. Yeah. Yeah. For those who want uh, some ideas on that in that venue, please check out our video on our off-grid medical doctor's emergency medical supply kit that he recommends. And you have to work with your local doctor to set that up. Uh, and there's all kinds of hoops you got to jump through to get more than a month's supply of anything, but it can be done. And uh, very good uh, advice. Um, the last section we have here, Anne, is a... <laughs> I, there's a whole group of questions, probably half the ones were submitted. There's how to get more access to your work and to support your work. So I'm going to read four statements all in a row because they're all in the same vein, and then I'll let you have at it. Uh, Bruce Woolley says, less of a question, more of a statement to the most courageous person I don't even know, yet fear that somehow powerful forces may silence you in some way. This cannot happen. Your example must ever shine forth for all true Americans. So what can I do to ensure you will be heard, respected, and followed? I do pray, and you are at the top of the list, but as my minister would say, let's all pray for potatoes while grabbing the hoe. That was from Bruce Woolley. From Nix 592 Dear Anne, would love to read, hear more of your opinion in a daily blog or video series. Yes, I do read your website. Yes, I've watched all your videos. Would love to see and read more. Maybe a digital newsletter, commentary on the weekly daily events from your perspective would be great. You're one of a kind. Brad Craig's News says, what are your suggestions for low-income uh, apartment dwellers for survival? Oh, sorry, I meant to ask that one earlier. Worley M.G. Tao says, how can we help you? I've followed you for some time and see how difficult it's been for you. Oh, that very, very kind sentiments. Um, first of all, thank you all so much for, for the very kind words. It's very, very flattering. First thing, I have really good news, and it's just coincidental that you called me and said, hey, we haven't done uh, we haven't done an interview in a while. Do you right. want to do an interview? And I'm, I'm not making this up, and we didn't pre, you know, we, this isn't some big conspiracy. I literally have now, um, with my web host, we're going to start doing, I think we're going to start doing a weekly podcast. It'll be about an hour long, you know, three or four topics. And the big issue for me is where I am right now. I have, I have Wi-Fi, but I don't have hardly any hardware at all. So doing all that back end, um, audio editing and uploading and all that is very difficult for me, but the web guy that I have now, he can do it. And so it will be recorded where he is on his end and then he'll do the editing and he'll get all the stuff up on my YouTube channel and we'll, we'll get that out there. Yes. It's been something that I've been thinking about doing, getting, getting back in the saddle. I'm not doing any more videos. I'm done with the videos. The diabolical narcissism video was the last video of me, but I'm happy to do these, these podcasts and so Mm -hmm. forth. That's, that's really great. So we are going to start that next week. And today, what day is this? Is this the 20th of April today? The t- okay, today is the 20th of April, 2017, so the plan is, is that we're going to start the podcast probably next week. Um, the next thing I want to mention, um, the best possible way for me right now to generate income is doing is selling my cattle marketing DVD set. That, you know, I feel like I'm, I'm – <laughs> I, still, I still marvel at the fact that, that people think that me just – 
talking and, and giving my opinion about things that 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 should be generating any sort of income for me. I still I still morally struggle and marvel at all of this, that just being a talking head or a pundit in, in, in entitles you to have people give you money. I certainly don't think I'm entitled to any of that. But my point is, is when I can sell the commodity that is the fruit of my actual career and my actual e- expertise, I always feel really good about that. That makes me feel great. So mm-hmm. yes, I still have my cattle marketing DVD set. That's still for sale. If you are interested in that, maybe potentially um, you can shoot me an email and then I'll send you the, the ordering instructions back. Um, I've had a couple people send and say, well, this is my situation. This is where I'm located. I don't want to oversell the uh, the cattle marketing DVD. For example, I, I think I had not too terribly long ago, somebody from New Hampshire send me an email and say, is this maybe something I could do? And I mean, uh, how many how many cattle markets are there in New Hampshire? I don't even know if there are any. Mm-hmm. It would be extraordinarily difficult. Um, and obviously, if you live in you know suburban Pittsburgh or something like that, it's your it's. I don't want to oversell it and make it seem like anybody can be raising cattle in their backyard because you absolutely cannot. There is you do have a need for obviously space access to cattle markets, so on and so forth. So again, common sense applies, common sense applies, but the DVD is still for sale. And yes, I do have a donation button still on my website. Um, It's there and it's not PayPal. Um, PayPal, they actually, because of my tax strike, they turned, the IRS got into my PayPal account. And so I had to quit using PayPal, but I found a really good service. It's Christian based. Um, it's called continue to give.com and I want to give it I want to give a plug to them because they have been absolutely fantastic they've been wonderful to work with um, and so if anybody out there is looking for some sort of an alternative to PayPal um, look these folks up it's called continue to give.com and then the payments um, clear through we pay is what I believe the clearing house is so there's no PayPal involvement at all so there's that as well. Great. And uh, you mentioned email, your email address that people can email you at? Yep. It's really easy. It's my first name, A-N-N, three letters, and at my last name, Barnhart, B-A-R-N-H-A-R-D-T dot biz, B-I-Z. Excellent. And uh, you've always bring a, a stunningly open and a challenging viewpoint on any topic that we have addressed together. It's not a bit of the milk toast you'll find in the commercial uh, media. We really appreciate that. And we're just glad that whenever we can get you back here on Reluctant Preppers, thanks so much for joining us. Oh, thank you for your time. God bless and happy Easter to one and all. 